Welcome to Netflix and Chat, where we take a look at some of the top stories from the previous week that revolve around Netflix. On today's episode, I wanna to quickly touch on the new merger between WWE and the platform, as well as them removing yet again another subscription plan, what most people would consider an overwhelming success when it comes to the Oscars. So right off the bat, let's talk about what's going on with this new merger between WWE and Netflix. It appears that in 2025, for the 10 years following, Raw will find its way to the platform, one of the longest running serial shows in history. Um, this is a Deal that's projected to be anywhere in the neighborhood of potentially five billion dollars as well as also having an option for Netflix to extend at a certain point as well. For anyone who follows wrestling I'm sure this is nice to hear to some degree and maybe a little concerning in others. WWE in particular is across a variety of platforms right now. TNT, Peacock and now going to Netflix as well. To get your fix of wrestling is going to be a bit of a challenge if you're not subscribed to all these different options unfortunately but this is for sure a big deal for Netflix to be able to land something like this. It's been very clear for a while now that they've had every intention of expanding into the world of sports when you look at their catalog of documentaries and things currently on the platform. For me at least, it seems that like that it was an inevitability that we would see a move like this. And I wouldn't be surprised if in the near future we hear them teaming up with something like the NFL, NHL, one of maybe those top brands in the country. Something like that is more of a not a matter of if, but when. Then I wanted to touch on Netflix plan to remove yet another tier of their subscriptions. And it appears that they have every intention of removing kind of that middle tier, the one above the ads, but below kind of their premium at $15. Um, and it looks like they're gonna roll this out in the United States and Canada initially, then with plans to do this worldwide at some point as well. They really wanna make you choose, which is a shame. I think most people will tell you that the idea is to allow fans of the platform and allow fans of, of Netflix to, if they have to choose, will probably end up going up the ladder as opposed to down. We see this a lot in marketing. I know Apple is really big into this for sure. It's a shame. I think more than anything, you're gonna see a big divide between users who have that premium option and users who choose that very basic ad option. But, you know, I think with the growth we saw from Netflix in the fourth quarter of 2023, I'm not overly surprised by this, if I'm being honest. I think there is an expectation for them to just continue to grow, to continue to trade at a high level, and for this company to ultimately just continue to grow in a way I think few ever thought it could. You know, when we're looking back at this company 10 years ago, where we are today, I don't know if anybody would have assumed this is where they would have gotten. But I would love to hear from you. Do you think the potential removal of kind of that middle tier as an option, is that gonna be a deal breaker for you? Would you go up, would you go down? Love to read all about that in the comments below. Let's talk about the Oscars here for 2024. Netflix has taken home a combined 19 nominations, which I believe is the largest for the company. Um, and technically it's not the highest as of right now with that particular title goes to Disney. Disney owns like nine companies. So yes, they, they again, they, they technically have it, but in terms of a company who just has a whole slew of awards um, under their kind of their umbrella. Netflix has that particular win as of right now. Obviously though, we're gonna have to wait and see how everything pans out, but I will say that for Netflix to be able to get that many type of nominations is a real proof of concept for this platform. It very much shows what they're aiming for, what they're going for, I and mean, where their long-term goals are as well. And I would say the biggest nomination has to be Maestro getting Best Picture nod. Got some tough competition. I personally don't believe it'll end up winning that particular honor, but be able to put that banner up on the platform saying, you know, it's a Oscar nomination. Um, it's something that will go a long way for the for Netflix down the road, I'm sure. I would say personally, the biggest nomination though has to be Nimona in Best Animated Picture. Definitely has some stiff competition with films like The Boy and the Heron and, and Across the Spider-Verse, but I ended up enjoying that movie a lot more than I thought I would. I mean, I'm glad to see it up here and kind of getting its moment. Um, hopefully this brings a lot more eyes to that particular film uh, and that audience is able to grow because of it. And then finally, I wanted to touch on the trailer drops from the previous week, starting off with a full trailer for NASCAR Full Speed. It looks like another docu-series similar to that of Drive to Survive. I'm going, it feels like it's going for something similar, but something slightly different, which I appreciate as well. Um, I'm looking, excited to see what that particular show looks like here in the coming weeks. 
Next, we've got Tyler Perry's Mia Culpa starring Kelly Rollins and Trevante Rhodes. I don't know, it looks like a good time. It looks like it could be something enjoyable. Tyler Perry being attached to a project in any way usually means it's going to be entertaining for one reason or another. I feel like, generally speaking, when critics see his films, they like to get elements of it but aren't fully impressed. I would say, though, that for this trailer, it leaves something that kind of piques your interest, something that will bring a lot of people back. Next up, we've got Richard Linklater's latest film, Hitman, starring Glenn Powell. Richard probably better known for films like School of Rock, Dazed and Confused, and Slackers. For anyone who hasn't had an opportunity to see a lot of his work, I would strongly recommend it. His stuff is wonderful. And I would assume this film is going to be excellent as well. With the addition of somebody like Glenn Powell in a leading role, I feel like that is a guy that is really kind of making his mark in the industry right now. And hopefully this is just another banger for the both of them. And then finally, the biggest drop of the week by far has to be the full trailer for Avatar coming here February 22nd. If you haven't watched the animated show, I cannot not recommended enough. I will admit it's one that I personally put off for a long time and that was a mistake. It's a lot of fun. It's really enjoyable elements of it that I think a lot of people can connect with and it's a fairly quick show to get through as well. I think the episodes only run about a half hour at a time so it's not like it's an overly long commitment. If you haven't yet seen that, the live action show I'm sure will be a great way to dive in. M. Night Shyamalan had an opportunity to dive into this in a live action sense a while back. A particular try I think most people would tell you was a big miss. My Self included. So I'm excited to see what this show looks like in a live action format and an episodic and how that is able to maybe flesh out a lot of characters and flesh out the story I'm in a way that unfortunately M. Night's film just wasn't able to do. But tell me down in the comments below what are some of your thoughts on the news from the last week? Is there a trailer in particular that you were really excited about? I'd love to read all about that down there. And until next time, have a great time curling up on the couch and enjoying a good show.